Hello there again, minions. It's Wheezy. Today we're back in Insurgency Sandstorm, playing some Frontline, and I figured I'd walk you through this gameplay because I've really been enjoying this game, been playing a ton of it, and in this game I'm playing as an observer, and I'm gonna stick with the commander during this game and kind of walk you guys through my thought process and how things work in Sandstorm because, again, the tactical aspect of this game is a lot of fun. It really appeals to what I love about shooters. And so I figured I'd take you through a good gameplay and just kind of explain things as they go and then also just kind of let, let you enjoy the gameplay. So um, here I'm kind of setting up yeah, some of my kits, but uh, I decided to go with the G36 as the observer here. You can see this yellow icon with the three lines. That's the commander. In some Come game on. modes, there can be more than one commander at a time um, and there can be more than one observer, but you basically have to be within 10 meters of your commander as an observer for him to be able to call in fire support, whether that's mortars, smoke barrages, helicopter gunships that you can call in. Um, so those two being able to work together is a critical aspect of the power of the commander in uh, Sandstorm. So the way the frontline game mode works is that it starts out with a neutral point, but essentially there's a series of points on the map, and once the neutral point gets captured for one side, then there's always two points active, one that's an attack for your side and one that's a defend, and so there's this tug of war of you trying to capture the enemy's next point to move towards their final objective, while they also can attack your point to move towards yours. So it's got this, instead of everyone fighting over one objective, you're pushing back and forth against each other, which has a really cool dynamic. It is a wave-based mode, so um, if your team runs out of waves, if your team gets killed a lot, then you can also lose. When you capture a point, you get additional waves added. Um, so it kind of, again, feeds into this tactical gameplay, rewards being smart about your movement. Um, so in this initial point, we're basically trying to capture the C objective, um, which is the first neutral objective, and then it'll kind of begin the push-pull game mode. So. So I'm starting out trying to be cautious um, as I'm capturing this point, and then once it gets captured, I move Charlie's out to the open, clear. and it's ours. a sniper's looking over this way. <laughs> that is something that can happen in Sandstorm. One bullet can kill you easily, and so you have to, you know, be playing carefully and tactically. But got the initial point capture, uh, waiting for my wave respawn uh, to move up and move to the next point. So as the next respawn wave hits, I'm again still observer, so I'm going to be looking for my commander so I can get close to him to use that fire support. Uh, in the bottom left hand screen, as the observer you can see uh, that it shows how far you are from the nearest commander. Uh, in this case I'm about 100 meters away um, and I can see his icon um, kind of pop up on my map there, or not on my map, but on my screen. And so what I'm trying to do is move towards him as tactically as I can, but also trying to be in a bit of a hurry. One thing I want to call out here is that audio discipline is important in this game. As you're getting close to an area where you might encounter enemies, it's good to not be sprinting around to keep your footsteps more quiet. Um, so I'm being a little more cautious as I get here. I find my commander and I'm moving towards him and there's an open window. Oh my god, really? <laughs> And somehow I managed to get tagged as I was crossing in front of that window fuck? towards my commander. No, and as you can hear in the background, I am not happy. Sometimes it can be rather disheartening to work so hard to move across the map and just get taken down instantly by a bullet. And honestly, I was more mad because that was my mistake. I was like, ooh, commander! And I was running straight towards him through an open window and I just caught a stray bullet. Another thing to notice here is as I'm moving around, you'll see me toggling fire modes for my weapon. Um, this can be a good thing to pay attention to as well based on what engagements you're expecting to encounter. So there I was expecting more of a close encounter, so I was in full auto and you could see it was not easy to get shots on target for that guy. So I took some shots at him to try and see if I could get some hits, um, but then I want to move and take cover. I don't want to stand out and take those gunfights. Uh, there you can see I find a guy moving through the bottom floor there and manage to get him with my full auto fire. Now I'm moving back to my commander so we can hopefully call in the fire support. Catch another enemy moving through here while my commander has his binoculars out. And uh, he's going to call in some support there requesting a gunship. And you can hear how the way it works basically is once I'm close to him, he makes the request and then I call it in on the radio. 
So now I'm trying to help protect my commander, listening for footsteps in our area, but then as he's moving, trying to stick close to him. I hear gunfire downstairs, so I'm looking for this guy. I heard from where he was shooting. He heard his reload there in the corner, knocked him out. I hear guys in the building next to me, so I want to try and enter there and be tactical about it. Just get outnumbered. There was two or three guys in there. I think I may have taken down the first one. Uh, I'm not even sure, but respawn on the wave with my commander, and we're heading back towards the objective. Here you can hear the gunship that uh, we called in coming in. Um, like kill streaks in Call of Duty, we will. Me and the commander, the observer and the commander that called in the kill streak, will actually get credit for the kills from it. So you'll see I have a pretty chonky uh, kill count at the end of this uh, game, uh, despite not getting most of those kills with my gun. Here, my commander gets shot. I hear him go down. He's now dead. So I know these guys are in this building right clear. So I'm going to try and clear this building again, now that I'm a little bit more aware that there's multiple in here. Managed to take three guys down. Take some cover for a reload. Reloads are also something you have to be very deliberate about in this game. You do not want to instinctually reload after every kill in this game because it can take a lot of time and very easily cost you your life. And because you need so few bullets to kill, uh, it's often not necessary. Um, there's even a button uh, on the console I'm playing on Xbox. You hold down X and you can check how much ammo is in your mag. Um, there, I got a, took, took a shot from a guy that was on the second floor of a building across the road. Um, and I was trying to switch to single fire to try and engage him. Uh, and another guy walked up on me and killed me. <laughs> A lot of these frustrations are with myself for making some of these silly decisions uh, as I'm playing through the game. And again, with everything being so deliberate, changing fire modes, deciding how you're going to engage, um, you have to be very deliberate about these engagements. So here I am, still following my commander, listening for footsteps in the area, trying to support him so we can call in more fire, fire support if needed. Need an observer, come to me! So he's calling in a helicopter minigun. It's basically a Huey with a minigun. I see a guy across the way at a longer range, so I switch into single fire in case I want to engage him at further range. Managed to pick that guy off. So you can see how choosing the right fire rate can be important because it's. Much like you'd expect from a more realistic shooter, having accurate shots in full auto at anything beyond close range is just not really possible. So I see my commander moving up to the objective now that we have the helicopter near to support, so I'm trying to keep up with him to support him. Uh, not In case he needs more fire support, but also mainly just so that we can move together towards the objective. He's trying to work on clearing upstairs, so I'm trying to cover down, make sure he's not getting to get snuck up on. And then as he pushes up, I'm going to push up and clear the room with him. Now we're capturing the delta point. I'm going to continue to clear and look towards the next point. And the com this commander was moving awfully fast. He was a, obviously an experienced player. Um, and so when I get done clearing and I notice that he's moving, I'm like moving to try and catch up while still being very aware of cover here. Find an enemy who's checking the bottom floor. The helicopter's giving a lot of cover for footstep noise because you can hear how loud it is. So I'm being a little bit more cavalier with my footsteps and sprinting more to keep up with my commander just because I know I can get away with it a little bit more because of the noise. Still being aware of where it could be because I just run into two guys and take a fast shot from an M1 of all things. Waiting for my respawn. This is my commander so I'm spectating from him uh, seeing where he's at. And we basically pushed into the enemy spawn and got them pushed into their last objective here. Um, and firefight uh, or frontline is um, played in two halves basically two rounds um, where you each take turns attacking from either side. Um, so it can either be win 2-0, lose 2-0, uh, or a draw. Right 
So this will be this us observer. closing in on their last objective for the first half target. of this game. Or the first round. And since we got them pushed back so far, I'm pushing up a lot harder than I normally would in this game mode. Just not only to stay with the commander, but because they're pushed way back. So we want to keep the pressure on and just try and end this. You can see at the bottom there, we have 12 waves of spawns remaining and they have zero. So now it's basically single elimination for them. If we wipe out their last living guys, then the round is over. Or if we destroy that objective. So. so this is a bit more of a YOLO push than you would normally do uh, in this game. There's some fire support, obviously, that's been called in. You do not want to get close to that, whether it's friendly or enemy. Artillery strikes will kill you. So there I'm checking my ammo in my fire mode as we're moving into their last point. I'm making sure I'm in full auto and wipe out the enemy team use up all their waves so now we'll be moving into the next mode uh and i'll kind of show you how i determine if i want to play the observer because uh you only need to be an observer if you've got a commander um and if you're a commander without an observer being a commander doesn't really give you anything else um so if i'm deciding if i want to be an observer or commander i kind of wait a second here at the class selection screen to see if someone's going to select commander so that i can choose observer or um if i want to be a commander I might select that first to give other people the option to see that there's a commander in the game so they can choose observer. And then if no one decides to be an observer, I can always switch classes uh, afterwards okay. if I want to. But the same commander, same guy chooses to be commander again. And uh, he did a really good job, so I'm going to stick with him again. So now we're on the insurgent side. Basically, same map, same game mode. We're pushing from the other side. He's YOLO rushing the center point. Not a bad idea, um, but especially with him being the commander, uh, I just need to stick with him. Even if this isn't normally how I would play this, when I'm playing Observer, my job is essentially to stay with the commander, and so I do my best at that. When I post other gameplays, you'll see that I play quite differently when I'm not, you know, chasing down my commander to support him. So here we're kind of outside of the objective, but supporting our team going in to capture it. So we're looking for people approaching it from the enemy side. So I switch into single fire because I'm anticipating some people at longer range. Uh, I do see a guy there. I don't think I got hits on him. So I call him out and I'm looking to see if he continues moving on. But I'm aware that that guy could still be there. So I'll be careful as I'm rechecking. There I can peek out. Take some shots at him and manage to see him go down. Put one more in him for good measure. But you can see the difference between single fire and full auto. How much more effective it is when you're at anything beyond close range. I hear my commander yell that he's throwing smoke. So I decide to pop smoke and throw it out there too. Because I anticipate that the reason he's doing that is so he can push over to the objective. And I need to go with him. So might as well use my smoke and go with him. Uh... Put on my gas mask so I'm not coughing and wheezing as I run into the smoke. Throw it to full auto because I'm anticipating getting closer people. And go with him. Oh! He even startled me, even <laughs> recording commentary afterwards. Just get caught out in the open. Just take a stray bullet and boom, just like that. So I gotta wait for my next respawn. And then try and fight my way back to my commander. One facing towards C from D side. Trying to give a call out uh, to my teammates for where that guy shot me from as they're moving up. Um, when you're dead and waiting to respawn, you cannot speak to your live teammates, so you can only speak to the other spectating teammates. Uh, so you have to wait till you respawn to give those calls. Out. Which is cool, it's very realistic. Your dead teammates can't give you call outs. At least not in this game mode. I think there are game modes where you can do it, but not in frontline. I see that guy peek out from behind that car, so I make sure that I take cover before I re-engage him. I think he thought I didn't see him because I was running around that corner, but I did. Putting shots on this guy. I know I'm low on ammo, so I take cover here to reload and re-engage. You can pin a lot of these walls, so it's good sometimes to throw through there. I decide to pull out a frag since he's taking cover. Let's see if I can get one in there. I think I'd actually killed that guy through the wall. And as that grenade is waiting to go off, I think I, I think I took that guy down a bullet. But since my frag went off, I know that room is probably clear, so I'm gonna push in hard. 
see a body on the floor. A lot of people will play prone. It is a good, effective strategy in this game when you're defending an area. So sometimes you gotta put some bullets into those bodies and make sure they're dead. Uh, I don't know if I got both of those guys uh, before I took that bullet from the other side. That, that was not a great position. Uh, I didn't. I wasn't familiar with that building, so when I pushed in, I didn't know how visible I'd be from the far side. Um, but managed to get a couple kills before I got taken down. So now waiting again for my respawn wave. And spectating my commander just to get an idea of where he is and what he's doing, so that when I respawn, if I need to move to him, I know where to go and I know what he's doing. So again, because we have this attack and defend mode, um, the C point, for instance, right now, they can be attacking. So even though I'm 130 meters from our object objective we're trying to attack, I'm relatively close to our defending point, so I have to start being careful that there could be enemies around. So I have to move more methodically, be more tactical, watch my corners, things like that. So there, I heard that guy screaming after I took cover. I wasn't sure if I killed him until after I heard that scream. Um, because I was gonna try to switch to semi-auto to re-engage, but then I heard him heard him dying. I was I think I was planning on throwing a frag in there, but the smoke came up first, uh, so I just threw a smoke. Find that guy, and now I'm trying to clear the objective that they were attacking. With my smoke going off, pointing the second stairs. I'm trying to stay away from these open windows where I can take a stray bullet and get killed. Listening for enemy footsteps. And also using those footsteps to differentiate. You'll see me if I hear footsteps look towards it to see if I see a friendly icon to know if it's friendly or enemy footsteps. And now I'm met back up with my commander here. Make sure I can keep him safe. When he pulls his binoculars out, it's like switching weapons, so he cannot defend himself when he's got his binoculars out. So he called in an explosive drone. And he's moving up, so I'm moving with him. A little bit in the open here, so I'm serpentining. And I did take... Someone shot at me. You heard that crack in my vision, vision went a little blurry. <laughs> and then a just gets yeeted right at me there. So I'm not going to stick my head back up there where I just got shot from. Take a different angle. Tie the corners. Look for where the shot may have come from. I'm not any good to my commander if I'm dead. Although I think it was his body that got yeeted back in there, so he respawned and joined back up with me. Another good tip. If you're a commander and you've got an observer and he's not following you around, it might be good to go and find him if you need to call fire support. Because a commander and observer not being close to each other are pointless. They're basically just rifles. Commander just threw a smoke out that way. I was considering doing the same, but I didn't want to get in front of him where he was throwing that smoke. So I can see him calling air support. He's calling a mortar, and then he's pushing. So I saw a guy coming across the bridge there, take cover, look to engage, but someone else took him out from up the street. <laughs> some, of the, some of the object collision in this game is still pretty jank. This is obviously, you know, a relatively old game. I think it's been out six, five, six years. It's been a while, so... <laughs> Sometimes you get stuck on weird ledges and stuff. Uh, after the commander calls in fire support, I'm still making sure that I'm moving tactically here. I don't have to be right in his hip pocket, especially right after he calls for fire support, because he can't call it again for a while. So we can get a little bit of distance in between. I'm watching different angles that he can cover from where he is. So he's moved up under that bridge. I see people moving across, basically above him and potentially behind him, so I'm trying to get over to him. Watch this left flank. I hear footsteps behind me and to my right, so I'm also being mindful of it if they come closer. I am anticipating the enemies are above us on this bridge right now, based on the guy I saw moving earlier. And based on that gunfire, that's probably an enemy directly above us shooting. I hear footsteps a little bit off to my left here. Catch an enemy moving without checking his corners. 
made a call out that there are people up on the bridge. I see the commander move off, so I'm concerned they're going to shoot down at me from the bridge, but I have to take a chance that they don't know I'm down here and try and get an angle, but also move up behind them. So my commander is now dead. I'm basically just on the enemy's side of the map, being careful, seeing who I can pick off, basically, from a surprise position as they're trying to move up. I see a guy a long ways away. Switch to single fire. And manage to pick him off. Back to full auto in case someone comes up on me close. Now that they hear gunfire in their area, I'm in a bit of an exposed position, so I'm going to move back towards our objectives. Um, well, that's what I was planning on doing, but then we captured it, so the objective moved up, and then the round is over, and we won, so, yeah, that, I have just really been loving the tactical aspect of this game, I thought you guys might enjoy, kind of, the mindset of playing as an observer here, uh, and the dynamics between the observer and the commander, and you can see here, kind of, the final, uh, count for the match, I went 50 and 7, which, again, is mostly air support kills, uh, from that, but, yeah, definitely overall a, a fun game, and I'll definitely be doing more gameplays um, and bringing more videos to you guys, so hopefully you enjoyed that. If you did, you guys can leave me a like. If you don't enjoy these videos, you can leave me a dislike. And if you're new here because you like Sandstorm, subscribe, become a minion. See you in the next one.